be more proud of our football team. You're talking about a young football team playing their first conference game, playing a team that just upset the number 15 team in the country, the defending Big South champion, and our kids go out, fight tooth and nail. It wasn't pretty all the time. It wasn't perfect. But, man, you're talking about finding a way to win when your back's against the wall? I, I just can't say enough good things about the way our kids respond. I mean, we've had two games like this at home. And we found a way, somehow, some way, found a way to make a play. And uh, defensively, I mean, shoot, they had, what, 66 yards, I think, after three quarters. I mean, it was pretty much shut down central. And, uh, you know, offensively, we, we held the ball for about 38 minutes. We just couldn't put it in the end zone when we needed to. And I think we could have done that a few times. We were going to four-minute offense. We were going to be done with this. You know, but we, we, we just couldn't stick it in. And we could have completed some big plays in the past game we've done in the past. But uh, all that aside, we won the game. And for a young program, this is huge. Huge. At home in the first conference game to find a way to win. And uh, like I said, I couldn't be more proud of our, our team, our coaches, Coach Newberry on defense, Coach Chestnut, both those staffs, everybody involved. Um, find a way to win. Fire away. Well, there was no intent of anything. We were facing the front seven that was just, I mean, it was men against boys. And, uh, you know, when you have to grind out some short yardage plays and move the chains a little bit, we struggled with that a little bit. And we couldn't get off schedule. In the first half, you, you got two false starts. You got to block it below the waist, and you get set back. And we just we we struggle overcoming that if we can't hit a pass play or hit one of our guys outside. And um, you know we struggle doing that a little bit at times. Today we didn't throw the ball as good as we have maybe a week ago. You know as far as just pitching and catching, we threw it. We just didn't pitch and catch as well. I mean we go right in for the half, and Sumter as good as players he is, we had him on the post route. I mean we had some stuff we just we just didn't do it. But the, the intent really wasn't go into um, you know. Let's go win the time possession. The intent was to go in and try to score every time we got the ball. Whatever they gave us, we would work off that. Now, I knew if we could get ahead two scores in the second half, we were going to wear the clock out because I knew our defense could stop. Um, and down there, you know, we're, gosh, you're trying to decide what to do. You go for it. What do you, you know what I mean? I, half a yard. Let's go put this thing away. And uh, so we called timeout to get it, to get exactly what we wanted done. And then we did a poor job. Um, and their quarterback's a good player. He, he, you know, he, he finds a way to scramble around and make some plays, and that's what he did last Saturday when they won. So, um, but I don't think it was anything necessarily different. It was just a little different situation. It's more of a one-minute situation, um, and they just made a few plays to get out there. Was there more urgency to, to really score after they uh, after they scored against the 9-7? I'm just thinking of that big pass play. Yeah, I mean, we we were trying to. Guys, I can promise you, we're trying every way we could to get that ball in the end zone. I mean, field goals really weren't our mindset. Um, you know, we, we, we're trying to trying to get the ball in the end zone because you felt like if you could get up two scores, you know, you felt like you were in pretty good shape to go. You know, it was kind of weird. It was almost like the shorter game a little bit, where you're you're trying to decide where do you go for it? Do you kick a field goal? Well, you know what I mean? Because we we're down there to, a good bit, and we just couldn't. You know, luckily we made enough field goals to, to win. What was going through your head on that pass to Sumter after they called a timeout or second down at the end of the game? Because he was, again, they had bracket coverage. Yeah, actually, Coach Chestnut made the call and uh, did a great job because actually the corner, if you'll watch the beginning, he fired in the backfield and then turned around and took off after Sumter. And the safety just kind of hung and reacted late. and. Uh, yeah, y'all watched us. We gotta, we gotta be able to hit some plays in the pass game or get the ball in the perimeter. We couldn't really get the ball in the perimeter today, and that's a credit to their defense. We, we tried every way we could, but uh, you know, getting the ball pitched, getting the ball to Darnell Holland and Jay Bowen, and and those guys that have hit a bunch of big plays for us, we couldn't get it out there today. They were just, you know, we tried every way we could. We're drawing up stuff along the way. Uh, they were pretty good on defense, so it was a big pass play. I'd like to we take it in score, but it was a big play in the game, really big play. How did the two D-backs do? I, I think they did both did fine. I, I knew going into this thing, to be honest with you, it, it wasn't going. We weren't going to make a determination on anything today because I knew what they were facing. 
you know, I mean, I knew the front seven was going to be challenging for us, and uh, I thought they both did okay. I, I don't know how many snaps both played. I, I would venture to say it was close to even. Jake made a play a few more, um, but uh, we'll continue to play both of them and uh, and go for them. But I, I knew going in this, I mean, we made the move to to give us the best chance, but I I think we knew it was going to be a tough sled uh, inside with those guys. I mean, they're, they're a good football team. On, I mean, their front seven's everything, and then some, as you see on tape. They present some problems for us. Coach, can you talk about the pressure that is on your defense from such a close game, close throughout? When you're up by 20 or 30, maybe you can afford a mistake or two, let loose a little bit. It's not just that last drive and that last couple plays, but all throughout, if the defense makes one mistake, it could be crazy. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I think there's some pressure there, but I think our kids just go play. You know, and I think that's the resiliency you, you have in this football team right now is they just – they line up and go play and do what they do. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how much our kids feel the pressure. I know I do, and I'm sure all the other coaches do. But our kids, you know, they, they go play. And, um, and they know the situation in the game, you know, and they're aware of it. But, uh, you know, I, we have put some pressure on them. And uh, the defense has done a nice job. And uh, they made plays when they had to make them. And, uh, and they're going to, as a football team, we're going to have to use every available resource as we go down the stretch to find ways to compete and, and, and give ourselves a chance to win ball games. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of this probably from here on out, to be honest with you. In your eyes, how important is getting the first conference win for this year's football? No, it's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. It's a big deal. I mean, it's, um, you know, we talk a lot about it. The kids have, I've tried to keep the kids quiet about it for the last two or three weeks because they like to get ahead of themselves sometimes. And uh, it, it's a big deal. It's a big deal for our program. You talk about laying the foundation. You talk about uh, stuff you can build on. And you won the first conference game. The first conference game ever. You know what I mean? Shoot, you can't. It is a big deal. Ain't no two ways about it. And, uh, you know, it's huge. It's huge. It's huge. And we're playing some men out there, guys. I don't know if y'all noticed. There were some juniors and seniors out there that were. There were some, there were some big guys that played a little more football than our guys have, and uh, and for our guys to go compete like they did, um, shoot, you couldn't ask much more. Coach, you kind of comparing uh, versus South Carolina program a few years ago, and a lot of things of what you're saying, that's what the other coach was telling them. Uh, how important when you're talking about the youth on your team? getting to this stage in conference play and being able to get that win under their belts and also looking toward the next game? Well, I think you what you're doing is all the things we've done over the past year, year and a half, you're, you're, is, is positive reinforcement. You know, and as you build something, hey, this works. Let's keep doing what we're doing. What they're saying works. Let's keep doing it. And I tell you the most important thing I told our team, I said, it's a really big deal to win the first conference game. But you know what's a bigger deal than that? We're undefeated at home. Huge. Huge. We're undefeated at home. And that's something we talked about since probably uh, September of last fall we started. Um, so that's a big deal. But uh, I don't compare to the other school. No offense. Um, we're different. Um, we're going about this thing in a, in a different manner. Um, they had a lot of positive things happen. but. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of where we are today. Going back to those last four plays, the goal line stand, can you talk about what you were talking uh, with your team and staff about? Did you want to maybe fire somebody on a certain play, or it was a unique situation, they didn't have timeout, they probably had to throw, did you want to have to throw against some thicker cover? I did, and that's why I hired Coach Newberry. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean, you know, he runs the defense, and he does it day in, day out. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm all listening, and if I got something, I bet I didn't say anything. I mean, I, I, we stopped them all day. You know, I had confidence in what we were doing. Now, the thing got closer. I think we all, you know, got a little hairy there at the end. But uh, taking the – where that kid can't run the ball takes what they do best. And, and there they had no timeouts, and they really had to throw it. So you kind of had them a little bit. And then it got to fourth down. In my mind, I'm saying he's going to run it because this is it. You know, I thought he would run it on fourth down because that's what he does best. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, you know, for us, he did I'm more scared of him running the ball than throwing the ball. I mean, if he beats us throwing it, then it is what it is. But he's 
his threat is running the ball, and, and, and that's how they won, especially last weekend. That's how they won the game. Yeah, Following up on that, was uh, Nick where he was supposed to be on that play? I assume he was supposed to keep him from trying to run the ball. Yeah, honestly, I, I, the dog, I'd have to go back and look. All that stuff happened. It was like a blur. And second, when y'all played um, shorter, you talked about on their, on their potential game winning drive how the headset got really quiet and no one was talking. And I was curious if on this drive, it was the same experience or what y'all learned from that that you applied. Well, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't the same as, as that week. Um, you know, it was more so on offense when you're going down, do you take a timeout? Do you kick a field goal? Do you go for it? We had a couple of those a day. And I mismanaged a little bit of the one timeout because we didn't do a good job of recognizing the 25-second clock. And then we ended up kicking a field goal anyways, which I was going back and forth, what should we do? I'll be honest with you. Do we go ahead and get a half a yard? And let's go put this thing up. Let's get this, let's be done with it. And that's what I said on the headsets. I went out to the guys, I said, guys, this, this Let's go finish this right now. I mean, we got the ball down there. We need half a yard. And uh, so, but some of that, but it wasn't, no, uh, Doug, there wasn't as much of that in this game. Everybody's communicating. I think we've grown a lot as a staff. I got frustrated a few times in the game, probably shouldn't have. You know, we kicked the ball at squib at the end. It looks like an onside kick. You know, we do some things that probably a young football team should do, but it still don't make it any better when we're trying to win a ball game. Um, but uh, that's stuff we can learn from. So much easier to learn from a win than it is from a loss. You mentioned that half yard that you debated over, but before that, before the third quarter ended, it was fourth and nine, and you went for it. You only had six points, and you got bailed out by that roughly half score. What was the mindset there? Of we're, we're, we're on, what, the 35, four, we couldn't kick a field goal. Yeah, I don't think we make a field goal into the win. Okay. So what did we really gain out of punting the ball? I would made up my mind before the game started. If we got any, anywhere there going into the win, we're going to go for it. And he told me he could make it from around 28, but that was my call. You know, I just said, hey, let's take a shot. Because I figured we're not going to gain a whole lot. You know what I mean? Putting the ball right there. Didn't think we could make the field goal. So. How much do you think Justin Thompson's experience in the shorter game helped you? Well, there's no question. Being out there and having to do it and having to make it, um, you know, helps. You know, we want to make them all. But, uh, but but he made enough to win today, and that's that's it. what matters. But I think being in a situation like that, have done it as a true freshman. And we forget sometimes, you know, he's a true freshman. Um, you know, uh, there's no doubt that situation helped him without a doubt. What factors went into uh, restructuring how uh, Jake McKenzie was used this game? Um, we talked about that several weeks ago, and we're trying to again use every available resource to. Uh, to help us get going, we're, we're still trying to grow up in the guard box and get our inside game. And a part of that's just youth and strength, and you know, just some things that we're going to have to work through. It's going to take some time. And uh, and Jake's standing over to back up quarterback, and we know he's a pretty good player, but he's not playing. So we're trying to figure out how to use all our kids. And uh, so we we put him in there a little bit in off week just to see what it looked like, and he it didn't it, he was natural. And uh, then when Micah got hurt, it was. It presented itself, and uh, you know it's a little dicey for us because you got number ten out there playing 100 miles an hour. You know what I mean? He don't. He's a competitor, and, you know. And so Jake's the, still the next guy up, and he's having to do both right now. But uh, we talked about it, and I've talked to our staff and our team. We're going to do whatever we can for that given week to give ourselves a chance to win, and then we'll worry about it next week after that. And uh, so. He played today. I don't know how he played. Like I said, it was tough sledding. And we knew that a little bit, but he got in the game and played. And that's experience he can learn from. And, you know, we'll continue to do that and play both those guys probably. We're better if we can play a few guys. We're, we're not at a point yet. Playing one guy the whole game is tough it, with a young team. If you can roll guys in there, they're much more effective. They don't get tired and they can maximize every play a little better. Offensive question How did you evaluate Trey White? Uh, performance today. Okay. Hey, gutsy, gutsy, hard nose, finds a way to make some plays, did not throw the ball particularly well today versus a week ago where we couldn't miss. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, he, that's what I mean. But he's gutsy. He just finds a way to make it happen. Sometimes he could throw the ball and he'll just tuck it and go get first down because he knows he can do it. You know, and I like that. I'm good with that. And uh, so, I mean, he, Trey's a great competitor, man. 
You gotta love having that kid on the field. He'll give you that look like, Coach, I'll go get it. You know what I mean? You have confidence in him. And I think he helps our, our offense with that attitude and the way he goes about his business a bunch. Just one note while Coach is here, um, that win today was the first uh, first newcomer into the Big South Conference to win first Big South Conference game, and that goes back to 2003. It's awesome for our football team and our football program. And you know what? It's awesome for this university. You know what I mean? It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Good. Our kids, man, going to be proud of them. Dez and Trey. Who else is back here sneaking a peek? Hey, Tom. But uh, again, hey Nick, man, y'all got them all in here today. Um, but but I, I and I say, and I mean this, and not just because they're standing back there. But uh, I'm proud of our football team. I'm proud of our kids. The way they, the way they fight. No matter what's going on, man, they fight. And, and man, that's a big deal. You guys good? Man, I appreciate everybody coming today. I hope y'all enjoy the. The thriller we put out for you guys today. <laughs> Wasn't necessarily intended to be that way, but we'll take it any way we can get it. Thanks, guys. Come on, guys. Y'all's turn. Don't put any of that stuff in the locker room. <laughs> Weak stuff. Uh -huh. We got the phone out. Okay. Throw in seven, eight guys in the box at the first level. We'll talk about what you saw and how you evaluate your performance against what they showed you defensively. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, we came in knowing, you know, kind of, you know, what what our what they were going to uh, present us. Um, you know, they changed a couple things up, but I thought our game plan going in uh, to this game was great. Uh, you know, that this was one of those games that uh, you know we had to really grind it out, and uh, we really had to kind of show, you know, this is our coming out party. It felt like, um, you know, we, we put a couple drives together. We didn't uh, we didn't punch it in the end zone, but. Um, we, we did enough to win, and uh, I'm, I'm just so proud uh, to be a part of this team. Um, you know, our, our defense played one heck of a game. Special teams obviously got us some points, but uh, you know, I, I thought our O-line played their tails off, and uh, I'm just proud to be a part of it. How important was the time of possession? Um, what were the numbers? What were the numbers on time of possession? Uh, you had the ball up close to 40 minutes, and they had about 40, so it was almost half. Well, as, uh, as Coach says, it's worked for 20 years. <laughs> um, <laughs> Look, hey, we uh we just followed the game plan and uh, we, we executed a lot a lot better today than uh, some games past. I, I, I felt like this was a lot more of a team win. You know, obviously the defense stepped up big time. I thought you know special teams and offense played well. Um, but hey, you know that's that's part of this offense. You know, time possession is a, a huge thing, and uh, I don't know the yards either, but I, I bet we had the uh, total offense was probably more too. Um, wow, yeah. Um, so time possession is huge. How much pressure was it on, was on you after they scored, you know, to go make some plays, move, move the ball downfield, and I guess get that close to the Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, yeah, I guess there was some pressure, but I mean, we as an offense, you know, especially coming out after the second half, that first drive, I think we went three and out, um, and we, we made some, you know, dumb mistakes on those couple plays. So we kind of regrouped and said, hey, let's just put a drive together. And I, I don't know how many uh, how many plays that drive was that ended the third. Twenty something plays. Yeah, like cool. 20. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 awesome. Um, I think that just kind of shows you um, the the grit of our guys. Um, you know, it's nineteen. Nineteen. I mean that that uh it, it makes it a lot easier on me when I got I got. How we prepare? So uh, we feel like we we prepare pretty good throughout the week, and then on on this morning we talked about. I mean, it's just another football game. Go out there, have fun, and just do what we've been doing these past couple weeks. Just playing hard, playing fast, and the game to turn out how we want it to turn out. So we didn't get that. that Nick, you've got uh, two receptions on two passes. <laughs> um, where are they going to move you to offense in second? Where are you where you were supposed to be on that goal line stand? Yeah, um, Co Coach Newbury made a, the same call um, towards the end of the game there a couple times in a row where that put me in a spot to basically just read the quarterback, um, drop kind of into coverage. Um, I guess I'm wearing, I've been wearing the wrong jersey. It's <laughs> ETSU because they keep throwing the ball to me. <laughs> Again, just like a ETC threw it right to me. Luckily, Coach uh, Newberry puts in the right call to be in a position to make a play. Were you supposed to drop into coverage, or were you supposed to contain him from trying to run up the middle or both? Well, drop into coverage. It's okay. about five yards deep. So. Okay. Where do you rank that interception versus the ETC interception? You better take that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's close. That one, man. 
I mean, I mean, as far as the individual statistics, you know, it's not a, a huge part of why why I play football. I, I do it for the camaraderie and, and you know, the brother, brotherhood that we have here, um, and to to be able to help the team win today. And I felt like I didn't play as best as best I could throughout the rest of the game, but to be able to make the plays win um, and help the team get a win was definitely an exciting moment. Jesse, can you get through that long pass? Um, well, we had been seeing that the post was open on the whole game, and you know they were double supporting on the uh, pitch action. So Coach he sort of drew up a play, drew a uh, nine post, and I seen the guy shoot down. So I just tried to climb on top of him as soon as I could. Trey just put him in a great spot. You know we just connected on it, and made a big play. Nick, can you talk about uh, the play? This question is actually for, for any of you. What happens in such a close, low-scoring game? You can't let loose. The, the, you don't have that margin that you sometimes have in some of these games where you've been up by 20 or 30 points. And what the pressure is like, even in the fourth quarter, not just on that last possession, but what the pressure is like when one mistake can lose the game at any point. I think it all goes back to falling back on our, our practice habits and what we do throughout the week to prepare for our game and what we've done over the last year preparing for this season. Um, our coaches put us in all kinds of different pressure situations. Always at the end of practice, we have some kind of over to D game is on the line situation, third and seven, or uh, goal line, whatever it is. And um, I think them putting, in, putting us in that situation day in and day out of practice has given us uh, a little bit of an edge to, to be kind of calm and collected in the moment um, to be able to, to play defense well. <coughs> yeah. Sure, I mean, to, to, you know, we keep having first come up, and you know we're not really sure how we're going to respond. And to be able to have it go our way each time has been huge, I think, for this program. Um, and, and hopefully, it continues to keep going our way. For the most part, for most people. Uh, I mean, all of that goes back to the preparation throughout the week. Uh, that's something we we kind of talked about as a defense overall. Uh, Coach Newberry did an outstanding job of coming up with a game plan to to kind of slow them down and and take them away from running that read option. That was one of the biggest things that we that we tried to do, was take them away from what they like to do. And uh, we had to beat one-on-one -on -one blocks and make people make plays on, on their side of the ball. But uh, the preparation, like I said, the preparation and all the practice and the game plan kind of put us in the right position and, and allowed us to, to show what we can do. So as far as today, of course it's exciting and it's something that, that we can kind of build on. But as far as for the future, that's something, like I said, we just got to build on it and keep keep doing what we're doing now. We can't change anything. We got to stay, keep practicing the same, keep preparing the same, have the same mentality every game. It's the first conference game, but it's also just another football game. Uh, we won our first conference game, but we're going to continue to win. And it's really all that matter at the end of the day is, is how you respond after your first conference game. Are, are we going to dwell on it and stay, live in the past? Or, are, or next week, are we going to go and have another good game, continue to build on it, continue to, to, to do the same thing that we're doing and not get complacent? You know, you know, win or lose going into this game, you know, our, our, our mentality as a team is we got to just build. Um, but it's a lot easier to build for the win. Any more questions? All right, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.